Lesson 6.5, Word Problem Solving, Find Equivalent Fractions. It's very important you saw 6.4, and if you haven't, it's linked in the description. In Lesson 6.4, we learned how to make equivalent fractions by using common denominators. And we can use the strategy, make a table or draw a diagram, to solve equivalent fraction problems. So remember the numerator is how many parts are chosen, or shaded, and the denominator is how many equal parts in all. And the steps to solve word problems, we read the problem, figure out what we need to find or what information we will use, and how we'll use the information. Then we solve the problem, and we use a problem-solving strategy, and we use an operation if we write an equation like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and we check our answers to see if it makes sense. We can solve equivalent fraction problems by making a table of equivalent fractions. We start with the fraction. Here we have two-thirds, and we make a table of all the equivalent fractions for two-thirds. So two-thirds can be re represented as any of these fractions, and we could keep going to make the table longer. We could keep going off to the right. Mr. Lee is planting a vegetable garden. The garden will have no more than 16 equal sections. So that means that's the most it will have is 16 equal sections. And three-fourths of the garden will have tomatoes. What other fractions could represent the part of the garden that, have, that will have tomatoes? So we have three-fourths. We need to find other fractions that are equivalent to three-fourths. And we can make a table of those fractions. We can use multiplication to find equivalent fractions. We have three-fourths. We multiply the numerator and denominator by the same number. We can use a two. We get six-eighths. So that would be an equivalent fraction for three-fourths. We can also multiply the numerator and denominator both by a three, and we'll get nine-twelfths. We can multiply them both by four, and we'll get twelve-sixteenths. And we can multiply times five, times six, times seven, times eight, and so on, and make even more equivalent fractions. We can draw models to find equivalent fractions. Here we have three-fourths. There's four parts in all. That's the denominator. And three are shaded. That's the numerator. Now we have eight parts in all, and six are shaded. Now we have 12 parts in all, and nine are shaded. Now we have 16 parts in all, and 12 are shaded. If there are just a few parts, the parts are going to be larger. If there's many parts, the parts will each be smaller. Each numerator represents the parts of Mr. Lee's garden that have tomatoes. Each denominator represents how many parts there are in all in his garden. As the denominator becomes a greater number, the size of the parts becomes smaller. Sophia is making bracelets with beads. Each bracelet has four beads, and three-fourths of the beads are red. If Sophia makes five bracelets, how many red beads does she need? Well, we can solve the problem by making a table. We think there's four beads in all, and three-fourths are red, so that means three of the four beads are red. That's for one bracelet. Here's the number of bracelets, the number of red beads, and the total number of beads. If she makes one bracelet with four beads, three will be red. If she makes two bracelets, that would be eight beads, and six would be red. And we can continue on in our table and see if she makes five bracelets, 15 beads will be red. So Sophia will need 15 red beads to make five bracelets. And we also could have used the strategies find a pattern, act it out, make a list, draw a diagram, or use models. Now Sophia is making necklaces. The largest necklace will have 24 beads. Other necklaces may contain fewer beads, 
but they will have at least 12 beads in them. So she's going to have at least 12 beads, but she's making some larger ones that have up to 24 beads. In every necklace, half the beads are red, one third are green, and one sixth are yellow. What combinations of beads represents all the possible necklaces that Sophia can make? So we can solve this by making a table. We can make total beads in the necklace, common denominators, the fractions that would be equivalent, and the combination of beads. We need common multiples of two for the half, that would be the denominator for half, a three, because that's the denominator for a third, and six, because that's the denominator for one six. We write all the multiples of two, the multiples of three, and the multiples of six, and we find the multiples that they have in common. We have a 12, an 18, and a 24. Now we need to make our common multiples into common denominators. We had a 12, an 18, and a 24 as common multiples for 2, 3, and 6. We ask ourselves for the half, 2 times something equals 12. Well, 2 times 6 equals 12. We multiply both the numerator and denominator times 6, and our new numerator is 6. We have 6 twelfths. We ask ourselves 3 times something is equal to 12. Well, 3 times 4. So we'll multiply the 1 times 4 also and get a new numerator. We do the same thing for 1 6. We ask ourselves 6 times some number is 12. That's 6 times 2. And we multiply the numerator times 2 and we get 2 twelfths. And we do the same thing for the denominator 18 for half, one third, one six, and for the denominator 24 for half, one third, and one sixth. We find all the equivalent fractions for one half, one third, and one sixth that have the denominator 12, 18, and 24. If half are red, that means in this case, six would be red, four would be green because that's one third, and two would be yellow because that's one sixth. If she has 18 beads, nine will be red, six will be green, and three will be yellow. If she uses 24 beads, 12 will be red, that would be half, eight would be green, and four would be yellow. Common multiples help us find common denominators for equivalent fractions. So by finding common multiples, we write equivalent fractions that have common denominators for one-half, one-third, one-sixth, and we can find the combination of beads that Sophia will use to make those necklaces. One-fifth of the adoptions at an animal shelter were for cats, and three-eighths were for dogs. Were there more cat adoptions or dog adoptions? We need to make equivalent fractions to solve this problem. We can make a list of common multiples for five and eight, because that's the denominators, and our multiples of five are five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. Our multiples of eight are eight, 16, 24, 32, 40. And we can see the lowest one where they can meet is 40. We ask ourselves, 5 times some number is equal to 40. That's 5 times 8. That means we have to multiply the numerator times 8. We don't want it to get jealous. And 1 times 8 is equal to 8. Our new numerator for our equivalent fraction is an 8. We ask ourselves, 8 times some number is equal to 40. Well, that would be 8 times 5. That means we need to multiply the numerator times 5. And we get 3 times 5 is equal to 15. That means out of 40 animals, 8 were cats. 
that were adopted. And out of 40 animals, 15 were dogs that were adopted. So were there more cats or dogs? If you said dogs, you're right. There were 15 of them. Three-eighths is more than one-fifth. We found a common denominator by using common multiples, and we saw, by looking at the numerator, that there were more dogs. Tala cut a pizza in half. She cut each half into two pieces, and then she cut each piece into two slices. She ate two slices. What fraction of the pizza did Tala eat? We see that she cut it into halves, and when she cut one of the halves in half into two pieces, they became fourths. And when she cut one of the fourth pieces in half, the slices became eighths. So we can sh see she ate an eighth and an eighth, that's two eighths. We can also see that two one-eighth slices is the same amount as one-fourth. So that would be an equivalent fraction for two-eighths. When she cut it in half, she cut it into two pieces. When she cut each of those in half, she now had four pieces. And when she cut each of the four pieces into two, she had eight pieces, eight slices. Two-fifths of the students voted for Tala to be class president. One-third voted for Emma, and four-fifteenths voted for Tim. Which candidate got the most votes? Well, we need to make equivalent fractions to solve these. So we write a list of multiples of five, because that's the denominator. We write a list of multiples of three, because that's the denominator of one-third. We see they meet at 15, so we don't need to change this one. It already has 15 as its denominator, so we can leave this one alone and just use it as it is. We ask ourselves, 5 times some number is equal to 15. Well, that would be 5 times 3. We need to multiply the numerator times 3, and we get 2 times 3 is equal to 6, so that would be 6 fifteenths. Now we have to give the one-third of 15 for denominator. We think 3 times 5 is equal to 15. So we need to put a 5 here, and we need to multiply the numerator times 5 also, don't we? Our new numerator is going to be a 5. 1 times 5 is equal to 5. So using the denominator, we can imagine that there were 15 children that voted. six voted for Tala, five voted for Emma, and four voted for Tim. So who got the most votes? If you said Tala, you're right. She got six votes. They have the same denominator, so whichever one has the largest numerator is the most. So remember that common multiples help us find common denominators for equivalent fractions. In our next lesson, 6.6, .6, we're going to compare fractions using benchmarks. Stay strong, stay focused, and I'll see you next time. Bye!